Well, good morning. We got down to 53 degrees. Practically <laughs> bone chilling, Chloe. Chloe's out here, dogs are out here. I have my coffee in a thermal mug. Mmm, that's really hot. Um, I wanna keep it hot <laughs> until I finish it. Yesterday, the coffee got cold oh, way too soon. So I'm looking at my beds that I did yesterday and I was expecting to see critter, critter feet all in it. <laughs> Chloe, Chloe, stop. Critters weren't in it, so it looks good. Looks good. Um, everything looks really good this morning. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my steaks and just start, uh, I gotta stake up those cannellini beans because I didn't realize they were climbers. I could have sworn it said bush. That's fine, it is what it is. I'm gonna grab some steaks. Um, I need to stake up my Tixie, like I was saying yesterday. I don't know if I cut all that out or if I left it in. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the circle bed. Remember when I mulched? <laughs> These dogs are gonna have to go inside. Remember when I mulched the circle bed? That topsoil was not as dark as I wanted it to be. Um, so I think uh, once I mulch with this stuff, it's gonna look so pretty. It's gonna look so pretty. And then I wanna mulch my cabbages um, that are in the ground over here. Um, want to mulch that and here go the dogs so let me get set up see you in a minute uh finally finally for the first time ever this ever in my life i'm seeing my four o'clocks open usually they are are they night bloomers every time i've seen them during the day and in the morning they're deflated balloons this morning the yellow ones are open and they're so pretty let me show you Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stake up this, oh, what are these beans called? Cannellini, cannellini beans. And sorry, the sun is gonna be right at the wrong place for this. But, um, you can see here, yeah. So, I've got a piece of cattle paddle, cattle panel, I'm sober, I promise. Yeah. But, um, that my passion line has grabbed onto. So I'll have to uncurl that. Let me do that real quick. <laughs> Can I do anything real quick? I don't know. All right, so this is, <laughs> this is just a hot mess. I'm gonna have to basically take this out of the pot to get it through here. Oh, it's stuck at the pot. It's grown through the pot into the bigger pot. Ding, dang it. Okay, well. Plan B. Apparently, I'm not using the cattle panel. So, that makes quick work of that, doesn't it? A little bit mad about that. Um, I let it happen. That's fine. Um, so, let me find some steaks. <laughs> and we'll just put steaks where? At the beans that have already started to trail. Not all of them are trailing yet. So, I need like four steaks. Hopefully, I have some tall enough. Okay, I found these. These are uh, Tiki Torch holders, very old and very rusted. Got them from my neighbor's shed when he was moving, like seven years ago. Anyway, they're very tall. Um, and I love iron. Like, I would love to go through a junkyard and just grab all of the iron things and all of the wooden things that aren't bought me. Anyway, love to go to a junkyard. <sighs> you see what Mr. Smith has to deal with, anyway. And luckily we just had a bunch of rain because I'm able to actually easily push that down in pretty far. Um, and they kind of just blend in with the background. It's kind of, I mean, I think it's the better option. Anyway, for the next thing, I need to put some zip ties on my trellis over here that actually the passion vine is growing up because the birdhouse gourds are pulling the trellis away from the things and it's gonna snap. Anyway, I'll show you that in a minute. Another stick. I should go find that other. Anyway, it doesn't matter. made of a very unattractive teepee. But it'll do, it'll work, it'll be functional, and it should be fine, okay. So let's keep things moving along this morning. The sun is actually getting very warm on my back and we're probably gonna have another wardrobe change. It's that time of year. 
So that up top, up top there is starting to pull away, starting to pull away because the birdhouse gourds are so heavy. So let me get my zip ties and we're just gonna zip it tight just to hold it until these gourds are dried and ready to be cut down. Eight inch cable ties should do the trick. Okay, that's done. Um, I hate when this thing, I forget. But I can't function without it. It's almost like an addiction. Do you get addicted to having an earbud in your ear? Nothing's playing. Nothing's playing right now. Anyway, two things are done. I've been out here over an hour, I know for sure, but I was sitting, taking pictures of my flowers and putting those on Instagram. So if you wanna see those pictures I took, I am at Nikki Lee's Dream. Nikki Lee's Dream on Instagram. You can see the pictures I took this morning. I don't know what today's date. October. It's Sunday the 8th. Um, okay, so. What am I doing next? There was something else I wanted to go ahead and get done. Like early, like a project. I think, let me try and see if I can. Do I even try to stake up this tick seed? Guess we'll try. Let me get some twine. Did I make it better? I don't think so. Um, I think I tore it just a little bit more where it was hanging on by just a strip of skin. It's literally hanging on by a hangnail. And I think I made it worse. But anyway, the butterflies love it. The pollinators love it. Look, it's like, it's up in the air. I don't think it's going to hold. Let me get a big clip. I think I need a... Yeah. Anyway, we're trying, okay? We're trying to take care of the pollinators since I don't have zinnias this year. Or I don't have as many zinnias. Last year I had a ton of zinnias. I had a zinnia, like, wonderland. This year I have, like, four left. Um, but I have my, my seedlings growing over there. Look, I get off topic so quick. Over there. Oh, and it just fell down. And it just fell down. Yeah. Did it rip? Did it com it completely ripped off? Yeah. Okay. I tried. Look how pretty. This is the tick seed. This is that dreaded tick seed that's like a weed in all my beds. All season long I was ripping out tick seed seedlings because I had 400 million. Oh, they smell nice too. I didn't know that. Mm, anyway, I kind of feel sad about this situation. I need to think about what I want to do next. I'm thinking I need to pick that roselle because it's going to get later in the day. If I have wine this afternoon, we've all seen what happens. I can't. I shouldn't. I will. All right, here's the roselle patch. Everything's all laid down and wonky because of storms. Um, now, some of these roselle, they kind of started out being a little discolored with having the green, more green than red. But as they're aging, they're going to start getting moldy. So, I need to get these now. And there's ants all over them, so I'm going to have to get some gloves. And I can't use my regular garden gloves because they're too bulky. I'm going to have to see if I can find the uh, latex gloves. So, hopefully, most of them are good. I probably will have to toss some out because these have been ready for about two weeks. They've been ready, and they've been waiting on me. And uh, I hate wasting food, but I do it all the time. <laughs> Once the bloom is done, these little calyxes at the bottom, see those dark red calyx against the petals? Those will engorge and get larger and slowly make these little capsules. So for hibiscus tea, you're not eating the flower. You're not eating this petal here. You're not eating that, you're eating this little fleshy part at the bottom. 
that turns into this. And so when you harvest this, you're gonna peel off the outside and that's what you use for tea. Inside is like a little nugget, little green nugget, and that has a lot of pectin in it. So when you're making your jam, you wanna keep that little inside nugget that's filled with seeds. All your seeds are gonna be inside that nugget, but you're gonna boil that nugget uh, for your pectin when you're making your jam. Immature flower bud looks like. So these will be flowers in a couple days. Have my rubber gloves so these ants don't bite me. I mean, they're still gonna try to bite me, but hopefully I won't feel it. Hopefully I won't feel it. I was thinking. So, we should be able to completely fill this up with roselle. Stick this. So, the stems of this roselle are real sensitive babies. These stems will break so easy, which is why I'm not trying to pull them off or twist them off. I did have to put my hat on because I am in the sun. Like, I'm baking in the sun right now. Maybe I should save this for this evening. I don't know regretting the choices right now. I can't even enjoy my coffee. The sun's beating on me. Anyway, now when we were at the uh, meetup last week, um, I saw that they had some Thai, red Thai hibiscus. That's what this is. It's the Roselle. So it goes by many names, Jamaican sorrel. Um, I think it's also called uh, something cranberry, Florida cranberry. That's another name for it. It's got a lot of names. I may do this for just a few more minutes and then come back out later. This was a poor choice. It's a poor choice for right now because the sun's right on me. I should wait till the sun is setting in the evening. I uh, <laughs> keep the drinking to a minimum. I am actually a little hungover today. Just a little bit, a little dehydrated. I haven't had any water yet today, just coffee. All right, well, I think I've already made my decision. I don't want to sit here in the sun. Let's go back in the shade and do something back inside in the shade um and I guess I should start over here where the sun is going to get to very soon very quickly should have done this in the first place so the sun is going to start hitting here right it already has so I'm going to go ahead and mulch these beds with the new soil before the sun gets here um, and that way that's done because that's one of the ones I definitely want to make sure I do before I start filling beds with soil um yeah, one thing at a time. Let me quit telling you what I think I ought to might should do. This what makes the video so long. Ultimately, is my talking. Not a whole lot of doing. All done. That took six minutes, but I'm gonna speed it up for you. Um, now, now I'm wondering if I should go ahead and mulch this circle bed while I still have plenty of soil. That shouldn't take too, too long. All right, let me do a little mulching around the circle bed. I had to sing it. I just found something weird. It's a little weird and strange, just a little hiccup. I have to go in the house for a second. I walked by and I saw this. I can't tell if it's a bug or if it's a stick or if it's something has impaled. It's weird, let me show you. What is that? It's sticking through to the bottom. It's like it impaled it. It's like it, I don't know. That's just weird. It's not like we've had tornadoes. <laughs> what, what, how did that fall so hard? that it impaled the thing. Anyway, it's weird. These are the distractions that keep me from gardening with any kind of speed, besides my talking, is my eyeballs seeing crazy things. I feel like one of those Felix the cat clocks all the time. Okay, anyway, bye. Another wardrobe change. Um, 
And speaking of wardrobe, I don't know if you've noticed my lovely <laughs> white socks. Um, those are compression socks and they do help with the circulation in my feet because especially when I'm on my feet for a long time, if I sit down on the couch or wherever and just be still for any length of time, when I go to stand back up, it, the pain in my foot, it's mainly in my heel, mainly in my left heel, but sometimes it's both feet and sometimes it's the entire foot. It's like my foot swells up or something. And then when I step on it, it's painful until I can squish all that fluid out. Because after I walk a few paces, like from the kitchen or to the bathroom and back, by the time I've done that, the pain's gone. But I'm hoping, I've been wearing the socks for three days now. The pain is not as intense, but it's still there. And I did buy cheap, uh, you know me, I bought cheap compression socks. They were uh, two pair for $19.99 at the uh, healthcare supply store where we're getting some more gauze packing for my husband's surgery places Ooh. anyway it's, um, anyway this soil as a mulch but it's looking really pretty it's really dark this is the effect that i wanted when i was mulching with that topsoil so i'm real sad that i spent the time mulching with that topsoil because now i'm doing it again because i have this good dark stuff i just should have waited and i'm taking out a lot of this uh garlic chives because it looks like grass so once I get this garden put together and cleaned up and raked up and you know hosed off the mud and stuff I will do a protege update like a complete inventory of all what we have going on for fall like complete fall inventory I went ahead and fi finished uh, the circle bed without you um, the Sun I went in just for a second to have a bite of breakfast and actually it was 11.50, so brunch, it was a brunch. Anyway, got me a lovely bubbly. I haven't had any wine yet. I was gonna bring out some, I said, Nicole, don't you start so early, okay? Being responsible. Um, anyway, so let me pull up my stool, my sit kneeler. Sit kneeler has come in so handy. I'm telling you, um, I believe the 10% off that was linked in my other video that's still going on i should probably be linking that under all my videos actually until it's over i think it's until october 25th or 26th anyway i'm talking um let me grab my sit kneeler and my tomato cages and i've got to uh cage up the cherry falls <laughs> because the cherries falls is falling all over itself and some stems are breaking so i want to like nip that i want to fix that right now so let's go do that okay before i go i'm set up over there to work on that tomato but before i do that i'm noticing a very dark area right here now the sun has completely covered the potager we're in full sun yeah well, I have that little spot down there that's dark and I have a hosta that I need to get in the ground. I think a hosta would look perfect right there. So I think I'm gonna plant it right there. So over here, my messy entrance. Yes, I just let it get gross. That's just me, it's just who I am. I have this hosta that's been eaten up by earwigs and snails and slugs and who knows what. It's a beautiful hosta when, it, <laughs> when, I, when I got it. It was gorgeous. It uh, doesn't look so good right now. So, <laughs> what I'm gonna do, trim it up, clean it up, and I'm planting it right there. Okay, so, I don't know if you can see that tag. This hosta is called Paradigm. It's really gorgeous. Um, I'm gonna cut off all the damage, dig a hole, and plop it in. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna separate it right now. Looks like I could separate it into three just gonna leave it in one clump that way it can fill out this area a little bit faster. I'm just gonna take all the burnt edges off and this is most likely insect damage. It's not I don't think it's from the heat or from the sun. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Kind of wish I'd have, kind of wish I'd have moved it a little more this way, actually. But just angle the root ball. 
There we go. Okay, now back to these uh, cherry tomatoes. Okay, so I have two Cherry Falls tomatoes in this pot. One and two. And this one, especially the bigger one, it is starting to trail over a little bit, but I have a couple of stems that have broken. This stem here has broken, so I need to lift that up. This other tomato plant may not make it. It's not as robust. I do need to cut off a lot of dead off of that one. Um, but anyway, I need to put this tomato cage together and see if I can loop it through just like I did the last time. Hopefully a little faster this time. Let me get this set up and come back to you because this is going to eat up half the video. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to put this on this tomato. not to break any branches but so I'm sticking them all in and then I'll spread them out once I get the feet in the ground the feet of the stakes try not to lose any tomatoes okay it's gonna break Last one. Trying to get everyone in here. That's all. Lost another tomato. Just heard it drop. Another one dropped. Dang it. Lost some more. Wow. Okay, let's try to stop doing that. So I just lost half of the tomatoes off of here that I was trying to save. And I don't think it's going to set any more fruit, and that makes me mad. But I want it in the cage. Maybe I can do something with the green tomatoes. Maybe I can pick one. That's a lot of tomatoes that I just lost. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it. I'm sad about the tomatoes on the ground, but. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my harvest basket for today. Those are the tomatoes I lost. I'm feeling like I could make maybe some tomato pickles or some uh, fried green tomatoes or something with those. So I'm gonna keep those. Let me finish trimming this up. Okay, so it's all cleaned up, all done. And now I'm just gonna top off the middle with some soil, uh, some of the new stuff. And uh, we'll call this done and then we'll move on to the next pot. Okay, so we're getting towards the end of the video, I think. I think we're almost there. Um, so I have this pot here with a, it's got some salvia in it and it's got a mostly dead cherry falls tomato. I say mostly because there is some green on it, but now it's, green part's gone take the stake out. Um, so let's clear out this pot. Let's fill it with some soil and then let's fill it with some Swiss chard. That's going to be fun. And this should be really quick, right? Should be really quick. I did start drinking. Okay. Let me get my clippers. I am going to leave most of the roots in this soil. Take out the stakes. Oh, cut these at the, cut these at the base of the root or base of the stem. I mean, including the tomato. We'll just let all those roots decompose in the soil. All these clippings, I'm gonna take out this basil too, just cause it's annoying me. Everything's going in the compost. So it'll make its way back in the garden eventually, pulling out the weeds. Okay. All right, so here's our pot. Everything pretty much has been removed. These white socks are hilarious. I'm thinking maybe I should've got a different color. But it's fine, it's totally fine, okay. Fill it with soil. So this is my rose soil and 
leaf mold from Nature's Way Resources. Now this particular type of soil, it's not a potting mix at all. It's like an actual soil. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem topping off my containers with it because it's only the first couple of inches of the pot that's this soil. The rest of the pot is potting mix and peat moss and coconut core and perlite and all that other good stuff that's gonna help it drain out the bottom, so. I think this will be fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna water this in first before I start planting, just to settle the level of the soil. And then we'll get started. So in this container, I've got two types of Swiss chard. I have the Swiss chard celebration, which has the yellow and the red stem here. And then I have the ruby red. And the ruby red is a much darker red with very dark stems. So that's what's going in here. So I'm gonna start with taking all the plugs out. Look how pretty, isn't that pretty? Yellow. So you can see the ruby red is a lot different than just the regular kind of red stem. It has uh, green leaves. This actually has purple leaves. The root red does so. Two different reds. Closer. Now I think I'm just going to use my hands. I'm just going to dig it and shove it. I guess I'm putting them maybe three inches apart. Most at most. I want to try to get them all in here. Now this is already very moist, but I'm gonna water it in just to settle and level the soil. So we'll let that drain out, let it settle a bit. I'm pleased, I feel like there's too much of a gap here, but it should be fine. Okay, so I'm done done been doing some editing, been waiting for the sun to kind of go down. It's almost down. Um, so I can show you mainly the circle bed so you can see all the plants that'll look really beautiful. Um, but let me just do a recap of what I did today and then um, I will bid you adieu. Bella! Bella, shh. Anyway, let me show you what I did today. I'm so excited about it looks really good tomorrow's Monday it's sad about that all right so the cannellini beans on my ugly tripod <laughs> on my ugly TP so cannellini beans they're gonna start climbing up the ugly TP it's gonna be nice I did the cabbages they look wonderful that looks really good and then, okay, the circle bed. Look at this beautiful, beautiful dark mulch in the circle bed. The flowers look amazing. The dirt looks amazing. I do need to clean that. I need to take that plate. It's all mulch. I need to scrub that. Anyway, that's later. But the flowers look amazing and they literally pop against that dark soil. Oh, the roses are beautiful. Okay, so everything looks great. Love the blue. The blue almost glows. Like this flower, literally, it almost glows. And it's so pretty next to the yellow. I love yellow and blue together. Look how pretty that is. Anyway, this bed looks amazing. The hosta I planted looks amazing. And I do have a container with some pelagoniums that I grew from seed. I might plant these right here. That's why I'm sitting there. Those are pink. Everything looks good there. Circle bed looks amazing, balls. And then if I come over here, this is where I've been sitting for the last couple hours editing. I've been sitting right in that chair. I've got my water. I've got my wine. I've been drinking both quite a lot. <laughs> 
Anyway, my tomato that I semi-caged is looking good. This tomato is just kind of small and doesn't really need the caging, so I'm gonna call that done, that's good. And then over here, the Swiss chard, that looks amazing. Yay. And then of course, all the dirt work I did yesterday still looks good. Pots look fantastical. I added some soil to the basil, looks good, looks good. So next will be to add soil here and then especially soil here because I have a lot of that crap dirt, that cheap dirt from that pile way over there. It's like a lot of clay and river sand and it's kind of reddish orange that's underneath that mulch. Um, so we're gonna top dress all in here and all over here if we have room or if we have enough soil, sorry, if we have enough soil, because that's all that's left is what's here on this sheet and then the mud that's in that wheelbarrow. So hopefully I have enough. It's been an amazing weekend. And I feel good, I do. I love that I finally have this soil. I love that I think I have enough to do everything that I wanna do. I think I do. And uh, I can always go back for more when I get my bonus in March. <laughs> so that's the next time I get a bonus and you know, we're just not gonna speak about how much this costs. Um, and I may get something else. They do have some different mixes. I definitely want more leaf mold, but they have like a vegetable mix and a you know vegetable garden mix or whatever. I just wanted the rose soil because I'm doing more than just vegetables. I have a lot of ornamentals. I have a lot of fruit trees. And I just thought, let's go with their most expensive soil, obviously. Anyway, I'm not gonna ramble because I don't have enough memory on my phone. I still have a lot of stuff to edit. So I just wanna thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.